Coming up, NASA adds a live webcam to the International Space Station so you can watch them all egress in an emergency evacuation as we actually try to shoot down space debris using our water guns. All that and a whole lot more on this International Space Station enabled version of Space Vidcast Live for March 13th, 2009. Let's show NASA how we're supposed to do this. You go three, two, one, launch. Episode 209 for March 13th. 13th. It's Friday, Friday the 13th. 13th. Jinx. Yeah, well, that's why I'm wearing black. 2009. <laughs> my name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me is a beautiful, wonderful, lovely, and talented Carrie Ann Higginbotham. We are the Space Vidcasters, and we have got an action-packed episode for you today. <laughs> the International Space Station is pretty much everything. It's going to be all of our news. It's going to be our main topic. We're talking ISS, baby. Mostly because we were going to talk all about I STS-119, but that was last week, and then SCS-119 was supposed to go this week, but then SCS-119 didn't go this week, oh. but it may still go this week, but we're not really sure about that, so we figured, screw that! We're not even <laughs> going to talk about it then. Well, so we put SCS-119, it's it's, at this point it's just humorous, right? Yeah. We put it back on the calendar again, so you can watch it in the calendar. <laughs> but just, as a, just for a fun aside, when you're watching the calendar go by halfway through the show, watch the STS-119 screen, go to the bottom two lines, and I actually tell you, delayed from, delayed from, delayed from, delayed from. It's, it's really kind of sad. Uh, you know, and it was stalled because of a hydrogen leak. And all of that information is covered in the Space Vidcast brand new podcast that we've got on spacevidcast.com. That doesn't work very well, does it? <laughs> no. It's Space, Space Vidcast, Vidcast podcast. podcast. Yeah, not so much. No. So we don't have a name for it yet. I've been calling it, calling it the Spacecast. But if you've got a clever idea for a name, certainly leave it in the show comments or email benjamin at spacevidcast.com and we'll figure it out. But I think it's time to get this show started the right way. I think so. I don't know what that actually means. And to do that, we're going to start with some ISS Space News. Space News. Yeah, as Blair from NASA, who's in the uh, who's in the chat room right now, mentioned, NASA is helping us with our content this week. And oh, <laughs> just a little yeah. bit. <laughs> this is going to be a NASA tacular episode because <laughs> oh man. Uh, first off. Uh, they did something really cool. I, yes. I, I, we're going to beat them down later, but they actually did something very, this very cool. This is very cool. Something that I've wanted them to do for a long, long time, and that is... There's now a webcam on the ISS. Yeah. A live 24-7 streaming webcam of the International Space Station. <laughs> That's really cool. And my understanding is it's not of the IS... It's not inside. It's outside. Well, the shots that I saw earlier today were actually of Mission Control Center, where it is on the map, mm -hmm. you know, where they've got the different uh, zones where they pick up the signal and whatnot. So it was, uh, it, it actually, sh they've got a couple different shots they can go to. I, I think you're right. I don't think it's on the inside. I think it's outside. It's pointed at space. It's at, but it's still going to be, it's pointed at Earth. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's... But, I mean, pretty much what we're talking about is you now have the ability to go to nasa.gov slash station, and you can click on the little live space station thing and you get the live audio feed from the space station mm -hmm. along with a live shot of earth right from the international space station so you can watch the earth in real time as the iss see it sees it that's just awesome it's that's very awesomely cool. cool i'm considering replacing our nasa tv coverage with the iss stuff there's only one downfall there's no children's programming there's no but there's no nasa edge there's a, oh no, no NASA edge. what will we do without that yep uh the neat thing about the camera, and I think part of the reason that they were on that particular screen is that today was an action-packed day for the International Space Station. They essentially had to evacuate to the lifeboat, uh, the lifeboat, the boot. <laughs> My Minnesotan came out on that one, didn't it? The yes. last boot. The last boot. Uh, they had to evacuate to the lifeboat on the International Space Station due to impending debris attacks. Right, and as some people have asked me, they were kind of like, well, Hasn't this ever happened before or, or you know, what happens in, in a case like this? And the original case is that they normally do know about it way ahead of time. Yep. And then they go with a little joystick. I'm sure it's not a joystick, <laughs> but, you know. It probably is, actually. It's probably like an old <laughs> Commodore 64 <laughs> joystick. <laughs> to like, <laughs> anyway, but so then they move the ISS 
out of the way. So they, they can move the International Space Station. Right, which I think thrusters. some people didn't don't yep. necessarily know. The issue, my understanding is at least, and of course now that we have NASA edge in the room, I'm sure I'm going to be told how wrong I am, but that's not the point. The issue, my understanding is, is that uh, the original calculation said that the debris, which by the way was only three quarters of an inch long, mm -hmm. if not even, um, was going to pass about three miles. Not a big deal. Three miles, no big deal. Right. Yep. But then they redid the calculations and said, oh, no, it's actually going to... That's not good. How's that again? <laughs> so that little piece of debris, that little three-quarter inch piece of debris hitting the International Space Station would be the equivalent of a, what is it, oh, I think anvil... This, somebody said a 60-pound safe going about 100 miles an hour. Slamming into the space station. Uh, that would be bad. And the, the part of the reason that this is so deadly and so bad for the International Space Station is that the debris is moving so flippin' fast. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the space station itself is moving at 17,500 miles per hour around the Earth. Right. If you've got another piece of debris that's swinging around the opposite direction at, oh, I don't know, let's just say 17,500 <laughs> miles per hour, that's over 30,000 miles per hour that those two are going to collide into each other. Yeah, that's I a don't little care. scary. It's just a little itty bitty piece of something. That's just going to rip right through right. the space Right, three quarters, station. like my knuckle is about an inch long. So, I mean, we're talking like not even that much of something just wreaking havoc. And you have to remember that some of the widest parts, or not widest parts, but like some of the longest parts, I say, I'll put it that way, of the ISS are solar flares. That's huge. So those solar pan, uh, solar flares, did I say that? I was confused, I'm like, <sighs> yeah, it's late. It's been a day. Mm -hmm. Okay, solar panels is what solar I'm trying panels. to say. <laughs> Thank you, Exhibit. Anyway, so, you know, rips in those things, that's not good. That means loss of power. They have to re be replaced. The last one's just now going up, hopefully on STS-119, should that ever get there. Huh. So, you know, there's a lot of different issues to go along with that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's interesting because this is not the first time this has happened. No. And, no. You know, a lot of people, it was actually breaking news on CNN. We had the live feed on Space Vidcast today because it is kind of a big deal. When they're like, oh, by the way, we're going to evacuate the ISS, you know. You got right. kind of a newsworthy it's one event, of those things right? you don't really hear very often. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding is that it's happened around about five times or so, mm -hmm. depending so, yep. on the situation. Um, but that's not the only thing that's ever happened in the ISS, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So. No, oh, no, no. Well, I mean, I was going to touch it. Well, no, yeah, we'll get on to that later. Yeah. The, we'll call it the brown note. Later. Brown note. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One of the big issues, and part of the reason that this happened yet didn't surprise me at all, is mm -hmm. because there is a boatload of space debris. There's more than a boatload. There is a... There's a few ship loads. Yeah. And there's a couple of football field loads. As you saw in the graphic <laughs> in the opening of the show, there's just tons and tons of stuff up there. And when those two satellites collided, was it about a month ago, maybe not even that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that just threw a bunch more debris up there. And it's, it's all, it, the Earth's gravity pulls it right back in. And because of that, uh, these are things that could potentially hit not just the International Space Station, but you know, when you're we're thinking about taking your Virgin Galactic trip into suborbital flight, it could hit that. If we start doing lunar colonies on the moon, it could hit that. You know, anytime we anytime we go up into a, you know suborbital, more more like low Earth orbit, mm -hmm. these things become issues, and there are just lots and lots and lots of them up there. And someone needs to do something, and so someone decided they like playing with water guns. Yeah. I I love this idea, <laughs> and if I remember correctly, and again, the links, of course, will be in the show notes because I don't memorize everything, and I, even if I do, I don't do it well, but there's a guy in England who came up with the brilliant idea of moving the space junk out of the way with a, a, essentially gigantic water guns. So how does this work? They just load giant water guns on the ISS and go pew, pew, My pew. understanding. Because <laughs> how much, remember those games from the 80s where you're like, you, you got the little things like, mm, pew, the little spaceship games, like pew. Get the, oh, get I was the, thinking like in a carnival where you have to make the oh, yeah, the, that's a good the clown's like head yeah. blow up or something yeah. like that. Kind of like that. My un again, my understanding of it is that it'll be another satellite type looking thing, but it'll kind of go <laughs> <laughs> when it needs to to get stuff out of the way. Is it going to be like green and translucent? Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> Actually, I what I really think pew, would be as Gon says, pew, pew, pew. it would be the perfect job as far as I'm concerned, if there could be somebody up in the satellite 
with a gun, like a mm -hmm. super soaker. Oh yeah, it right? has to say super it, soaker on the side. One of those. I think that would be hysterical, personally, but th that's kind oh, of a nice... Oh, a great iPod app that goes. <laughs> that, wouldn't that be cool? Just like, that <laughs> would be. That would be. So uh, it's it's a very interesting idea, really, when you think about it. And it, it makes a lot of sense because it'll the force of it will, you know, it, it's going to keep going no matter what until it hits something and then it's going to move that out of the way and it's environmentally safe it's just water you guys the fun thing is steve says but wouldn't water moving at seventeen thousand miles per hour be just as bad and the answer to that is yes i don't think the idea is that we're shooting up i think we're shooting it down towards earth so right. what will happen is because rather than being in an <laughs> we're earth not shooting orbit, at mars or anything rather than it going around the earth we're going to shoot it straight back down towards the earth right and as such it's going to it's it's not going to take months and months and months to get back. It'll take hours. Right. And then it's just going to dissolve in our own atmosphere. It'll heat up. Mm -hmm. Mostly. It's going to make that noise, too. Any, so. any, anyway. Yeah. So oh. that's... <laughs> I thought that was an interesting idea because, you know, a, a lot of... It, well, this whole show is based on the ISS due to the news today, and it, it basically came down to space debris mm -hmm. and just space junk up there. And, you know, all you, we still have space junk from the Apollo era floating mm -hmm. around up there. Mm -hmm. We've got space junk from the satellites that collided. We've got space junk from the satellite that sh uh, China shot down. And if I remember correctly, I think there's still a tool bag. There's, there's actually, floating around if you up go to was it, NY20, uh, I'll have to get the link. Someone if it remembers the link. It's the real time satellite tracking. Mm -hmm. They've actually got a tool bag. <laughs> tool bag tracker on that. You can see a real-time Google map oh, that's so with a tool sad. bag floating over the Google map. We'll definitely add that to the show notes as well. Uh, as a final note, uh, you know, we kind of mentioned STS-119, which is uh, delivering the final trust segment to the International Space Station, as well as delivering the, uh, I believe it is the final solar solar panel to the International <laughs> Not Space Station. Not solar flares. Not solar flares. Sorry. Flares. To the International Space <laughs> Station. Uh, it was delayed, like we mentioned earlier on the show. We're hoping that it's going to go up this Sunday. If it does go up, on Sunday the 15th, certainly stay tuned to the NASA, the NASA, the Space Vidcast Twitter account. Well, NASA's will work too. Stay tuned to the Space Vidcast Twitter account. We will keep you up to date as to when that launch is going to occur. But we will also be covering that live at spacevidcast.com and uh, let you know what's going on. Really there. quickly, the, it was supposed to go up on uh, Wednesday uh, the 11th, okay? Yep. And the reason that it was delayed is because there was a leak in the, I, I believe it was the hydrogen Ventiling, ventilating system? The ventiling system. <laughs> it's, you know what, it's one of those days and y'all know me, that's how I am. Anyhow, point is that the ventilating system, there was a leak in that, and sometimes there are leaks, that's kind of what happens. And so they sort of uh, uh, would have cycled through and it was still leaking and they cycled through again and it was still leaking and it just got to the point where it just, um, it, it, it just wasn't working right. And they said, you know what, this is just entirely too dangerous because as you remember, hydrogen go boom. Right? Yeah. So so uh, they put a 24-hour hold on it so that everybody... Hold, hold, hold. Yeah, so everyone could kind of go out there, look at it, make sure, see what was going on, and see what needs to be replaced. And it, thankfully, at this point, they do believe that they'll be able to replace it and get everything back up and running and uh, for a launch on the 15th. So there yeah, you go. Carbon said it got to the point where it's just getting scary off scale. Here, here's the thing, though, and there are a lot of advocates in this room for keeping the space shuttles around until 2015. I'm actually not one of them. I think we, I think the space shuttles were great in their heyday, but uh, they need to be replaced with a new vehicle. And NASA has decided that that vehicle is Constellation, for better or worse. And space shuttle, you know, the, the five original space shuttles. Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, and Atlantis were all built by, I believe, Rockwell International, if I remember correctly. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm, I'm pretty sure they were all built by Rockwell. Well, Rockwell's no longer. They're, they're gone. I mean, th these things are 30 years old. I, I think, uh, well, when was Discovery built? Like 80-something? And, uh, you know, obviously we've kept it up and we've added new parts. And, I mean, it's not like we just, it's not like an old car where you get it and it starts to rust. Right. But at the same time, components do start to break down. And I'm not saying that because of their age, this happened. Because, because otherwise this... we'd be replacing him any time now. <laughs> but I, well, I mean, there is the potential that it is just an old system. Right. And no, 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 I understand. These systems are going to start to break down. And I, there was a comment on the podcast saying I was wondering when this was going to happen. I kind of thought the same thing. I'm like. You know, makes the, the systems are old, and uh, you know again they they add a lot of new parts to it. But you check out the Wikipedia article on Atlantis and see some of the emergency evac procedures they have for that particular space orbiter because of some of the old parts that they haven't been able to replace and desperately need to be replaced on that. Uh, a little orbiter. scary. Their book is a little bit thicker than everybody else's. Yeah, so uh, you know, I think it's time for us to move on. And I, again, I know we've got a lot of shuttle fans in the in the organs in the space vidcast room, but. It's just, uh, it's, it's time. It's time to move to Constellation, shut it down, let us get to, ST, what is it, STS-133, and 
let her let her go out on a high note. Let's not let's not push them to the point where we're all like ah. So that's that. All right. When we come back, we're going to be talking more about the International Space Station and some cool nifty facts that you may or may not know, as well as some nifty diagrams that you can get that show you what all of the International Space Station is. When we say no Very three, cool. what does that mean? We'll also be talking a little bit about our mission madness picks and uh, fun stuff like that. But before we go to break, the coffee of the month. Remember, we're doing this show live from the Crow River Coffee Company. And because of that, uh, thank you, Adam, for doing that. Uh, we do have a coffee of the month. And your coffee purchase does help go to uh, making this show happen. So our coffee And you get a is, sticker. And you get a sticker. You get a Space Big Cast sticker. Uh, it, I'm waiting for the graphic. Because neither one graphic. of us can pronounce it in any it's, way, shape, or form. Uh, that one. It's yes, in that Nicaraguan coffee, Segovia. It's that coffee right there. <laughs> 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 so definitely check that out. Go to CrowRiverCoffee.com and grab the coffee, coffee of the month. And uh, we'll be right back. showed the Mission Madness from NASA mm -hmm. uh, 2009. We've got a slightly heated debate here at Space Vidcast. Your picks are different than my picks. Just so, for the record... Because my picks are right. Uh, my picks are more right than her picks. No, 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 All no, right. no. What, who, what are your picks? I don't know. You, do you really, <laughs> I really don't remember? Oh, my uh, It's uh, Apollo 11, Apollo 13, um, Vikings 1 and 2, and Gemini 4. Very good. Booyah! Why, so you can go to nasa.gov slash mission madness and participate. It started March 9th, and I believe voting starts soon. Why did you pick those? Um, because I, I, you know, here at Space Vidcast, we happen to believe a whole lot in the in human spaceflight and, and that sort of thing. And I honestly, I what I really honestly did was I went through and... The thing is, you can go to little Mission Madness brackets, and then you can click on each of the different missions, and it'll give you information about each mission. And so all I did was I went through and said, all right, well, this one versus that one. Mm, I like that one. This one versus that one. Mm, I like that one. That's really all I did. There's some really great missions on there. Yep. There's a ton of missions I hadn't even heard of before, so which is like probably... Like STS-119. That's not... <laughs> that's not fair. 
totally not fair. Anyway, but so there's there's a lot of different things that are on there. Uh, so and it's anybody and everybody can kind of participate because there's stuff from like Mars rovers, there's Skylab, there's a lot of. Um, aerospace stuff that I hadn't really actually heard of before, stuff that I wasn't very familiar with. Um, there's like the the big balloon thing that was really yep. cool and, and the plane with the wings that are backwards and that was really cool too. So it's it's a very, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a heated debate. We have a tendency to agree a little bit because we're both still on the human mm -hmm. manned mm -hmm. space flight sort of missions, um, although you're completely wrong in every way, shape, and form. No, and then I'm there's right. Cylons like Quarkspin who really <laughs> prefer stuff like Mars Rover and blah, blah, blah. Cracking so toaster. Whatever. <laughs> Quarkspin, you know I love you. Don't even. Oh, man. <laughs> so my picks for the Mission Madness. Yes. Uh, Orion. Mm -hmm. Because and you did not pick Orion. Because it hasn't gone yet. Well, That's just stupid. But Ori so here's why I picked Hello? Orion. Because Orion is the vehicle that is going to bring humans back to the moon. It's the bigger, badder version of the uh, capsules from the Apollo era. Mm -hmm. and uh, it's, <laughs> Apollo 2.0. It's like, it's like the bus system for... <laughs> yeah, well, kind of. It's like the bus system for the Constellation program. And they're required for us to go back to the moon. It's, it's, it's cool. And these are the foundation points for us building a lunar colony with a giant freaking laser pointed back at Earth. <laughs> now, if only there was a laser mission, well, then I would have voted for we that. Need the Orion to be able to make <laughs> I'm just happen. saying. Because, well, you know, so that's that's part of it. And that, that's that. So Orion is one of them. <laughs> yes. Apollo 11, mm -hmm. because that is the first time any species from this planet set foot on our alien neighbor. Mm -hmm. I think we agreed on Apollo 11, if yes. I remember correctly. Skylab. Yes. Because Skylab is pretty much a hollowed out Saturn V. That's just awesome. That's like me. That's like me taking my house, lifting it up into the sky into orbit, and being like, "Look how awesome I am!" Yes, thank you, Mike. Mike picks the carry on mission of 2036, <laughs> right after I'm in the Space Olympics of 2032. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Um, actually, <laughs> yes, retro on the outside, revolution on the inside is Orion. I Thank you, Blair. I completely lost my, uh, <laughs> I'm lost sorry. my spot. I don't remember where I was. Oh, uh, you said Apollo 11, Orion, and Skylab. What was your other one? What was my other one? I think you also did Gemini 4. Uh, or did you do ER2? No, I think I did Gemini. Or did you... Ah, forget it. Go to the uh, Space Cast podcast to learn my last pick, because I don't remember anymore. There were a <laughs> lot of options on there, obviously. So uh, this is, this is I think, a lot of fun. Voting starts on the 19th and 20th for the first round. Anybody who's ever participated in any sort of bracket system, you will recognize it right away, of Very course. Very easy. Um, and you'll kind of see what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. And there are no write-in votes, so you can't say anything about Colbert. Uh, you can't <laughs> say none, nothing like that. Uh, and... And don't blame the co-host or the host or the everyman or uh, even Stern the intern. Can't blame them. They're not the ones who picked it. So just so you know. I blame the co-host. All right. Moving right along. We've got the International Space Station and some fantastically cool factoids about the ISS. This is not a brand new station. This isn't something new and shiny. No. It is the most expensive structure that humans have ever built, though, at over $100 billion. I think the current price tag is over $110 billion with a billion. Buh, buh, Just like Ben. Benny dollars. That's a fantastically large amount of money. What do we get for that? What do we get for that? Yeah. Well, we got a two bed, or no, a six <laughs> bed, two bath. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with, Sli uh, slightly used. Well, with two carports. Yep. yep right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One on the side, you can park at the front, you can park at the side. Fantastic views. Lovely view. views. Not much of a backyard. <laughs> can't really, uh, can't really do that. And transit's kind of, tra you know, tra you know. So the thing Drive is that, time is kind of a pain. What I didn't understand was uh, apparently the ISS went up, a, well, started right around 1998 and was scheduled to be done in 2003. Orbital assembly began in 2008. Right. They or, did, two, uh, 2008. <laughs> that would be impressive. Uh, 1998 is when orbital assembly began. Right. But then we didn't have uh, crews in, to, in it permanently. Well, permanently. We didn't have crews until 2000. Correct? Oh. Something like that. Right. Expedition was was an Expedition One was in two thousand. So there you go. Well, those are the long term crews. Right, the six month crews, which is right. what those ex expeditions are called. A spacious living, really spacious, <laughs> spacious like this. Um, in any case, but uh, NASA, which is the U.S. space agency, the Russian space agency, Japanese space agency, Canadian space agency, and of course the ESA, the European space agency, have all contributed in a number of different ways but specifically to um, hardware on the ISS itself. Mm -hmm. But there have been something 
it's a huge number. I know I've got it in my notes somewhere, but it's something like 16 different nations have put something towards the ISS, mm -hmm. whether that be uh, science uh, experiments Dexter. or Dexter. Well, I, yeah, well, Canadian Space Agency. Yeah, absolutely. Like that. So I thought that that was. I thought that was very cool. There's a lot of things about the ISS that I honestly didn't even know. And, you know, since this disaster came up or this near disaster came up, I thought, well, maybe we'll look into it a little bit. Um, there has been a wedding ab ab upon the ISS. So if you wanted to be the first person married in space, fail. Yeah, although you could be the first couple married in space. I think that's still up for grabs. That's true. That's because true. technically, Yuri uh, Melanchenkov mm -hmm. got married to his wife. She was actually down in Texas at the time, but they did their little ceremony thing, and I think that that was really cool. Um, let's see. Oh, the ISS runs on UTC, just like Space Fitcast. Well, it's the thing with space travel, and part of the reason we chose coordinated universal time, is that when you're traveling around the planet, I mean, your clocks would reset every like 10 minutes. You'd have to be in a new time. <laughs> what time, time is it? 4.20. 5.20. Damn it! <laughs> so that, that won't work very well. So you, you pick a general universal time. And it used to be Gre uh, Greenwich Mean Time. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the 60s and 70s was Greenwich Mean Time. But they needed something more precise. And that's where coordinated universal time comes down to. It's actually based on atomic clocks and the worldwide atomic time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's why we at Space Vidcast use coordinated universal time. And it is actually the time zone of the future, as it were. This is going to be the new standard for pretty much everything. So as all of you US viewers continue to complain, why don't you do it in my time zone? I can't figure it out. Well, you're going to have to figure it out because this is what we will end up moving to. So anyhow, off my soapbox. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so anyway, a typical day for the crew of the ISS starts at 6 a.m. or 6 a.m. UTC. Uh, they get a nice little wake-up call. Usually it uh, is something that is personal to some of the people of, of the crew. For example, today, it went, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Get evacuate, out of bed! Evacuate. That was their wake-up call. <laughs> a lot of times they get, um, you know, some favorite music and stuff like that. So that's kind of nice. It's mm -hmm. a nice personal touch, little touch of home. Um, they immediately do an inventory check of the entire ISS, make sure everything's kind of... That node's still there. Well, but I mean... It, Who took the refrigerator? You need to do an inspection. They've been asleep for like eight hours or so. So, I mean, that's that makes sense. They've got breakfast. They check in with mission control. Um, they start work right around eight or so. They've got lunch right around one, one thirty. They have an hour hour lunch, then they continue to do the experiments and um, upgrades and all that other stuff that needs to be done while they're there, as well as exercise. Exercise is huge up there because, well, there's no gravity. Right. So, so you, that's kind a, of a weird thing. There's bone loss and, I believe, muscle loss, and you, you have to constantly exercise. Right. Something that we learned early on, and actually believe within the Skylab era, something mm -hmm. that we learned how to do properly mm -hmm. is on uh, Skylab and whatnot. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so then they, uh, they have dinner right around 7.30. They also have another uh, sort of crew conference with Mr. In Control again, um, and then they go to sleep. They commence sleep at 9.30 p.m. UTC. It's, it's amazing how scheduled and their days are. <laughs> exactly. Like, but it, it, I don't know if anyone's ever seen uh, shots of uh, when they're sleeping up there. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit creepy. Yeah. Because there's no gravity or anything, so your arms don't fall to your side. So they're you're just, just kind of like, like this. this. And they're just kind of like, and their hair's everywhere. And they're just kind of there. <laughs> ah! <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> so, a little, little freaky. Um, one little one little thing that I wanted to sort of shove back in there was uh, we did have a show back in December, yep. and I I know everyone thought that I was crazy for talking about this, but JAXA has decided that they want to try and use uh, paper airplanes, throw them down from the ISS to see <laughs> what. Origami airplanes. <sighs> this makes so much sense, you guys. It actually, it's a, it's to demonstrate. We're trying to make space commonplace and and push the human race forward. And here we are talking about origami airplanes being launched from the space station. No, no, keep going, keep going. It's to demonstrate the feasibility of slow speed, low friction, atmospheric reentry. No. It's yes, it is. Yes, it is. And aren't you proud of me for saying all of those great big words right in a row and not messing any of them up? I am. What that really is going is. to be happening on STS-127, by the way, which hopefully will launch by the end of 2009. No. What? We can't even get 119 to launch, let alone 125. They're going to delay everything because of it. It's going up. Uh -huh. It's going to happen. Well, it'll go up. Just and the best part is that when one of those planes comes back down, no, actually, Mom, they're made of a very special paper that even though it's flexible, so you can bend it uh, to, and fold it for origami, um, 
it withstands wind tunnel tests and uh, heat tests, just like the ISS, like uh, heat shields and stuff like that. It's very, very cool. So why not just build the bottom of the space shuttle out of paper? I... <laughs> No, because that's a fast re-entry. This is the thing. It's the low, the slow speed, mm -hmm. low friction re-entry. That's what they're testing. Mm. That's the whole, hello, were you not listening to me? Not a word. All of those words, and I said them <laughs> right. Come on, you guys. So what is he, so the ISS was supposed to be done in 2003 mm -hmm. uh, with a complete, like we were going to be out of it by, I think, 2011. Yep. But 2011 is now its new complete date. Excuse you? 2015? No, it's going to be completed in 2011. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Sorry. <laughs> he had something crawling on him. It was really driving me crazy. Creepy. Anyhow, point is... So, since 2011 is now the new complete date, what's the new... 2015. 2015. Sorry, that's why I was like, it was going to be done in 2011, and so now it's going to be done in 2011. And I went, <laughs> what? I did... then, then what happened? I also don't listen do to you, to the by the way. Do we sell it to the Russians? I think we sell it to China. China? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they need something. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, so yeah, so no, that's what's going on. Uh, let's see if I have got anything else. La la la. La la la. Oh, one interesting little tidbit is the first, there was the first time that somebody that was not from the Russian Space Agency and also not from the American Space Agency went aboard the ISS for Expe Expedition 13. Not that long ago. Right, because we're only up, up on 19. 19. Right. That's twice on the show we've done that. I know. We're wow. married way too long. Anyhow, so, um, yeah, that's all. That's pretty much all I have. And that's everything you'd ever want to know about the International Space Station. Actually, there's a really good page about it on Wikipedia. If you just go to Wikipedia and search for International Space Station. Um, and, of course, it is an International Space Station, as you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. So there are a bunch of countries involved. And Sixteen it, nations. And it's, a, it's a pretty, it's a big structure. I mean, this thing is not small. Oh, yeah. It's, um, let's see, it's about... It's not an American football field. Thank you. Oh, I love this picture. Fair, it's bigger than an American football field. It's like an American football stadium about. Okay, and so here you go. All the stuff you guys see here in yellow, this all makes me think of Legos, by the way, but all the stuff you see here in yellow is the stuff that's already up there. All the stuff you see here in blue is what's going up on future American missions, and all the stuff in pink is going up on future Russian missions. And I don't know if we've got another one that's even a little bit closer than this one. Node 3, yep. Okay, Node 3, we were just talking about this in a podcast not too long ago. NASA's asking everyone to help us, or us to help them, name Node 3. And there you go, there's Node 3. Isn't it cute? I think it's adorable. And that could be, theoretically, that could be called Colbert. It could also be called Space Vidcast. Oh, it could! It could be, although I don't think we're going to be able to compete with Colbert, so I'm just going to have to go with Colbert on that one. <laughs> well, no, the good thing about Colbert is that he's bringing to mainstream media a topic that mainstream media doesn't normally talk about. This is very so true. So he's, ta he's talking about the International Space Station, and, and he's drumming up interest on it. So good for him, absolutely. I still want it to be named Space Vidcast, but, you know. <laughs> hey. Well, you know, we yeah, can always is, hope. It is what it is. So like I said earlier in the show, I mean, that's pretty much what we've got in the International Space Station. They had, a, oh, one last, actually, one last point. Uh, this is not the first time something wanky has gone you know horribly wrong mm -mm. Uh, we mentioned that there have been other times where they've had to evacuate and actually about a month ago maybe not even quite a month ago they hit what I like to call the ISS brown note which is the they have to elevate it they have to push it back up into orbit Earth's gravity pulls it back down and they use the Soyuz capsules and the space shuttle to push it back up there Russia had launched a capsule and they were going to push it back up into orbit and they hit like this perfect vibration there was a miscalculation. Resonated. Yep, that just resonated throughout the entire space station, and the whole thing started shaking. For almost two minutes. That You don't want to be shaking big, giant space stations. No, they originally thought that maybe that some of the instruments on board uh, could have been damaged because they're not meant to shake mm -hmm. at, at that rate for that long and all that other stuff. Um, but it looks like right now it should be okay, and uh, so that's a really good thing. Another really quick thing is back in 2007, there was a computer failure that I'm sure a lot of people remember. They got a virus. They got a virus. That's funny. Um, there also have been torn solar panels before. Solar panels. And there was a damaged solar alpha rotary joint as well which has, which in 2009 fixed, or 2007. The, the, it, was, it was damaged, it was then recently fixed, and that's where we lost the tool bag. Yes, on 126. Mm -hmm. See? Absolutely. One big circle. Giant. It all revolves around the International Space Station, <laughs> which conveniently revolves around us. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I was going to bring up one other final point, and I don't remember what it is, so I'm probably just going to have to move on. Okay. 
That's a bummer. So in any case, Mission Madness is going on right now. Um, thank you to NASA Edge for that. It's it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of trash talking going on. Of course, it's all in jest. Yep. I will make sure to put the uh, link for that in the show notes so you guys can go ahead and fill out your brackets and tell Blair how wrong he is and all that other fun stuff. And uh, be looking out for that. You can start voting on the 19th of March. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, the shaking on the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. This is going back a ways, and now it's completely relevant. And I'm going to say it anyhow. Awesome. If if anyone out there is a Babylon, a Babylon, a Battlestar Galactica fan, mm -hmm. it's a lot like when they took the Galactica into the atmosphere of New Caprica and then FTL out of the atmosphere. That's what I imagine the shaking was like. That just happened, right there, right here. You just saw that. My true geekery just came out, and my even extremeier geekery. Extreme year? I almost called it Babylon 5. Awesome, which is yes. made in China, apparently. Apparently it's made in China. That's our show, because... <laughs> and on that on... note, we outie. We <laughs> out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash spacevidcast, twitter.com slash sts119, and twitter.com slash ssdiscovery for Space Shuttle Discovery. Starbucks Diva in the chat room has been maintaining those accounts and is doing a fantastic job. And all of the alerts for things like the International Space Station, when things are launching, when they're not launching, and what's going on, can all be followed in those specific accounts. So, And we've got all the STS accounts. We've got the International Space Station, all of the orbiters. The orbiters are sassy. Oh, a oh, little. Oh, man. They're, yeah. they're, you know, I mean, they're friends, but uh, they're kind of like frenemies. They're frenemies. They're a little frenemies. bit. I'm just going to say that. And it, it, by the way, in case you uh, can't get enough of Space Vidcast, you kind of... You know, you need your little bit of a fix. We've recently started doing podcasts five days a week. That is Monday through Friday. And uh, they're about 10 to 15 minutes long or so. It's sort of like just the main topic part of the show. Yeah. Uh, when we do record them, we broadcast them live, but they could be at any time during the day. So really, you're better off just downloading from iTunes. Or, you know, follow us on Twitter again, and we'll let you know when we're broadcasting those live. So check out our brand new podcast. Check out CrowRiverCoffeeCompany.com. Check out our Twitter accounts, and definitely follow us and watch for ST. Yes, 119 launching sometime, someday in the future. You can watch us every Thursday night. No. Nope. That would be Friday morning, 2 a.m. Coordinated Universal Time. For those in the U.S., that's Thursday nights at 6, 7. We don't know because the time changed. 7 o'clock p.m. Central <laughs> Daylight Time. 9 o'clock p.m. Central Daylight Time. 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Thank you so much for watching. We are cutting this. We're going to credits. Roll the credits. I can't do it anymore. Can't do it anymore. I'm done.